Alrighty, friends, this is Wednesday and it is noon and this program is coming from the Ria United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Timo Carbonen. Assistant Pastor Mary Miller is also with us mm -hmm. today. And we go back to our Bible study. We call it Bible Reflection Time. And we have taken a one week break during Thanksgiving time. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving season. And now since we are making our journey towards Christmas, uh, we have celebrated the first Sunday of Advent and the next Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent is coming our way. So this is very special time and mm -hmm. I hope uh, this will deepen our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and I hope and pray we will find something new uh, in Him. And Bible study can't, can't hurt. It won't hurt for you to get closer. It would be exactly something we ought to be doing, whether it's a Christmas or Easter or some just ordinary time of the year. Bible is the way to connect with uh, with our Lord, and I am so thankful that you all are doing that. Uh, welcome to be part of this study today. Something, Mary, that surprises me every time when I check a little bit afterwards. I notice there was only a couple of people not underestimating the ones who are with us, but then later I hear several church members saying that I like the study you had Wednesday, I like it, I like what you said, and and your, it just tells me that people check in a little bit later sure. yeah. through YouTube. In, so even we didn't see uh, too many with us right at this moment, we appreciate the ones who are there. Mm -hmm. uh, God bless you and good to have you. But then I know that uh, people check in a little bit later based on the comments they make and see like there are some very faithful followers of this Bible study. So thank God for you all and, and thank you for being with us today. Get your Bible handy, open it up from the Apostle Paul's second letter to Corinthians and today we will be working on the seventh chapter. And so we start working. Uh, we pray, uh, first and uh, we have a little prayer box here in front of our church that members of this community can drop their prayer concerns uh, written concerns and sometimes I'm sure church members may use it as well but the year, once in a while once a week we check it out and see uh, what is there and I have prayed over I have read um, I have a few prayer concerns here, quite a few actually written concerns that are from the prayer box. And I'm going to ask us all to bless uh, one more time uh, these people. There's all kinds of uh, prayer concerns here. Uh, I, I'm referring to all sorts of uh, uh, life and circumstances I represented. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are so thankful that people are, are uh, comfortable in leaving these concerns and I we keep uh, things confidential uh, I'm sure there um, are sometimes matters that you don't want us to make announcements especially mm -hmm. if there is a na name underneath these concerns and we are not going to do it we pray over it we read it well sometimes the handwriting may be uh, when you read somebody's handwriting kind of challenging I know if you have read my handwriting you may have a uh, reason to ask that, well, uh, you are speeding up a little bit when you're writing. <laughs> Actually, Mary, I had a professor at Helsing University, and the, uh, he had reason to ask me that, Mr. Carbone, when you write, uh, are you writing all the three languages uh, together, <laughs> using Hebrew and Greek, and then Finnish? I said, no, I, am, I, I don't do it intentionally. He said, well, that's how I feel when I'm reading your well, handwriting. I'm reading it. <laughs> Well, when you are trying to get lots of writing in such a short time, uh, so maybe maybe that's the reason. But let's go ahead and pray over one more time for all these friends, all the matters they are dealing with. Like I said, I have read it through, and, and God is uh, aware about your concerns, and now we pray one more time over these friends and their matters. Dear Heavenly Father, as we start this Bible study today, 
We are so thankful, Lord, that you hear our prayers. You are God who listen. You are, you are God who care. And you are God who come to close to us and to our life circumstances. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for the, all the friends and matters they are asking prayers for. Jesus, Lord, uh, mm -hmm. I know that your blessing and blessed hand is upon these people. Uh, I pray for each and every one of them. I pray for the confidential matters that they have uh, written down. I pray for some practical matters that they are asking prayers for. And Lord Jesus, I am thankful for with one of these friends who, uh, who has uh, survived and made it through with the COVID-19. And, and several others. Jesus, Lord, in your wonderful name, I lay my hand upon these concerns and requests. And in your wonderful name, Jesus, I uh, proclaim the power and grace and love and that is in you and to take care of all these matters. In your wonderful name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and start working on this seventh chapter. Uh, let's do first uh, four verses, Mary, and see what is there now. All right. Chapter seven, from one to four. Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. Please open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone, nor led anyone astray, nor taken advantage of anyone. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I said before that you are in our hearts, and we live or die together with you. I have the highest confidence in you, and I take great pride in you. You have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite all our troubles. Amen. Uh, we believe, according to what, uh, based on research, that Apostle Paul did write several letters to a Corinthian church. Right. Of course, we have, in the Bible, we have two letters, but we, we have reason to believe that actually he ended up writing four letters, two have lost, and two are here uh, before us. And this is now the second one, and, and, and so forth. Uh, First thing when you read the seventh chapter uh, that comes to your mind, and it is not surprising you, uh, I don't think, is that how pastoral this, this chapter is. Mm -hmm. The whole letter is, even it, it was pretty short wording that Apostle used, but it was especially this seventh chapter when, when you keep on reading and meditating upon these words, uh, the first, first word that comes to your mind is just a very pastoral it's very what else it can be in apostle is writing but you can tell that he was acting not just a, a, a spiritual a strong very influential uh, leader but he was acting as a uh, pastor for, for Corinthian Christians that comes first to your mind now then he started with, with saying that because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. As a Methodist uh, pastor, I like the word uh, complete holiness because we fear God. So let's let's set little bit what what this uh, man of God is saying here what is it you hear Mary him say <clears throat> well the first thing that I think about when when the chapter starts out with because we have these promises mm -hmm. um, makes me want to go back and say well what were those promises again so I, I look back um, and I think it's helpful to look back at uh, the last few chap few verses of chapter 6 mm -hmm. um, starting at the middle of 16 as God said 
I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will, I will welcome you. And I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So those are the promises he's referring to. And what promises um, they are, I, I think of the word Emmanuel, which we talk about a lot during Advent, that is the word that means God with us. And so the promises he's talking about is that God is with us. Um, and because we have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. In a, a very uh, colloquial way, he's basically saying, let's clean up our act. Uh -huh. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's live up to these, um, the reality of what God has promised and um, work toward uh, truly being his followers and truly being his, his disciples to uh, work toward complete holiness. So that's what I, I think about when I read those first two mm -hmm. verses. First verse, that is. Just, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Cleansing ourselves can also be repentance, can also mean repentance, mm -hmm. which is, uh, repentance mean walking, turning away from our own ways and sinful ways and turning toward God. Mm -hmm. It is a action that needs to be taken. Mm -hmm. We are to, uh, to cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. So that can mean anything really and everything that is hindering our walk with the Lord. And I think the word repentance nowadays, uh, there, are, there are a few things about it. It is, it is not very, very often used even in sermons. I have put my finger because I am, I am preaching a lot. I have always been preaching a lot that I'm to ask whether I have been using enough this word of repentance maybe not because repentance is uh, the first step uh, mm -hmm. uh, the really initiative had come from God putting his finger on our heart giving us reason to repent mm -hmm. you can't really I don't think that anybody can repent before God's initiative at first you know because in the light of the word, when you hear God's word and Holy Spirit is ministering your heart, also the a little corner, secret corners of our heart that nobody can see, even you can't see it, but God's Holy Spirit can see it. And then through the word being preached, not just to your ears, but also to your heart, and then something starts happening in your heart and you, you all of a sudden you start you start having feeling of, of, of uh, more than feeling, but need to change, need mm -hmm. for change. And then the next step is that you are responding to that need mm -hmm. that is somewhere inside of you. You can maybe put it in words, but you just know that something in me is not right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there is a need for repentance coming. And then it is all it, it is all God's work from the beginning to the end. But uh, it takes our action to respond to that need, saying that I need. Yeah, I I understand God. You, you want me to repent. You want me to turn away from something toward you, and that is exactly what. Cleansing means and repenting means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, it is very positive word. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have been given grace to repent, thank you, Jesus, for that, because that's a that's a God's work in you. We don't have that wisdom or strength or or whatever it takes to say, okay, I might just repent. Well. We can obviously, but then we are thinking about the effects of of our bad position uh, with the Lord. We are just looking at the consequences that that effects that is 
uh, bad stuff, so to speak. And that's many times what, what people, even in, in sermons, with all due respect, my colleagues and myself, <laughs> even in sermons, we, when we are talking about sin, we're talking about these visible mm -hmm. uh, effects of sins, you know, saying bad words and smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol and 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 and, and so so forth so forth so forth now they are probably uh, they are a matter of discussion i'm sure but then the sin is much deeper thing yeah. than that yeah it's all it's all comes down to the heart that comes Not to your to heart it's in our heart and there's actions. no way that we can just get cleansed by feeling sorry for it. Mm -hmm. We need repent by the power of the Holy Spirit and trusting that the blood of Jesus Christ can clean us, mm -hmm. uh, can cleanse us all from all our sins. Mm -hmm. So repentance is a wonderful blessing of God, from God. And I think that is what God's church needs today. Mm -hmm. I need every single day um, to repent and I'm thankful that uh, uh, hopefully I can hear well enough uh, God's voice and feel his presence so that when he puts his finger so to speak using this metaphor on something on my heart I feel that uh, thank you God I can repent and by doing so uh, my faith and my peace and my strength in you will grow deeper mm -hmm. and I see you more clearly and 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 also in the life of the church if we walk in the light and we walk with Christ there is there is a presence of repentance among us and that is not friends bad thing it can you you ask well explain to him well, what do you mean by that let me say that uh, let me say that something, some, you did something that wasn't pleasing God. It may have, it, 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 it was something what you did and you committed to. And, and you probably didn't notice, you didn't realize. But then there is a brother and sister in your church. I don't know if this is happening too much anymore, but I, I wish it could. Uh, he comes close to you at some point and he he wants to talk to you and he he has very loving and caring heart and you can feel that he's not talking something from himself from himself or herself and he uh, he said that uh, he wants to bring you in on something that he believes that uh, uh, you may think about it another time and maybe have reason to to repent and and by the way it was presented to, presented to you with love and grace you know that it is not just a somebody who try to be better than you but there's so much love and care and grace involved and you know that God is using somebody mm -hmm. to correct me mm -hmm. right way and and I think it's a wonderful thing in the church uh, we are not inspectors over anybody's life here. That's not what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. it, it, it tells that Christ is with us and the Holy Spirit is using us and the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. among the church. And there is a grace and gift of repentance in the church, which is a wonderful gift. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that, that, was a, um, that was, I guess, and then, of course, as a, as a um, United Methodist pastor, this uh, holiness, uh, complete holiness, and this is, we can almost hear our church father John Wesley's voices talking about uh, our growing in, in toward perfection of God's love. And, and holiness is not just uh, uh, manifestations of the Holy Spirit that has been, I think, too often misunderstood. Mm -hmm. If that's all what we believe holiness is, that's a little little portion of it. 
Holiness is, uh, is, uh, is a state of your heart. It is who you are inside. That's what holiness is. And complete wholeness has something to do with growing, uh, to become perfect in love, which is to say that we have given all the rights to God and His love to do all what He can and He wants to do in our hearts. And that is something to do with repentance and surrendering to God, growing to be perfect in love. Okay, I end up preaching again. But, <laughs> Uh, you can't help it. They can't help it. <laughs> can't help it, friends. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, see what else is here. What is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, okay. There's something I would like for us to pay attention here on the third verse. Uh, the way he says, I am not saying this to condemn you. I said before that you are in our hearts and we live or die together with you. Well, let me read from the second verse so we get the big picture of it, the whole picture of it, maybe the whole paragraph here to, uh, to four. Please open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone, nor let anyone astray, nor taking advantage on anyone. I am not saying in this to condemn you. I said before that you are in our hearts and we live or die together with you. I have the highest confidence in you and I take great pride in you. You have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite, of, despite all our troubles. Now, when Paul says to Corinthian Christians here, that I said before that you are in our hearts and we live or die together with you. So Paul said, we live and die together with you. Well, is, are these the words that Corinthians deserve to hear from Paul? After all, mm -hmm. considering all the trials they are in, sometimes in a very big mess mm -hmm. they were in. So do you think, Mary, that these Christians uh, deserve to hear these words from Paul saying that uh, we live and die together with you? So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big word. Mm -hmm. That's a big word. Mm -hmm. uh, um. So was now... Here in the United States, uh, we are much better in small talk here than in Europe, uh, <laughs> which is to say that we are we are pretty good at saying good and nice words uh, one after another. So we are showering nice words, uh, yeah, and with saying sometimes actually nothing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We are showering nice words, and then we, there's a name for it. It's a small talk. It is to, uh, to make somebody feel good, although the, uh, is there authenticity? Is there really meaning to say that? Mm -hmm. So when you read, friends, hopefully you follow what I'm saying. I'm from Europe, and I, I've been 23 years here, so I'm, I feel that I'm pretty much... Uh, American myself, but I can see the big difference uh, between between the um, the way of saying things. Back in Europe, people are much more plain, especially in Northern Europe, much more straightforward. Uh, if if they hear somebody showering words on them, mm -hmm. beautiful words, uh, they don't buy it. They don't buy. They don't believe it's real. They don't believe it's real. So almost, you almost hear or attempted to believe, okay, Paul, let us know. Do you really mean what you are saying here? Mm -hmm. Do you really mean what you say? You know the other side of these Christian believers. You know the, uh, the, the, the failures and how, how they have been dealing with each other and 
not even going there how they how they walk how they're walking with the Lord and now you are you are saying that you know we died together almost saying that I I, I am I'm, well he says that he has great confidence in them uh, you have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite all our troubles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, do we have reason to believe that Paul is honest about this? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe yeah. so. Mm -hmm. um, he Good. Just even how he's written in, uh, you know, the nature of his writings in all of his other letters, he is, he is uh, not just saying things with, uh, with little uh, validity. He, he means what he says. And, and I think what this whole paragraph is trying to say, in other words, then... Mm -hmm. Um, is that uh, you know we're we're with you. This isn't just uh, us criticizing you or us saying um, you know you need to uh, get rid of everything that can defile your body or whatever. That as if we are here and you're there, but he's saying we're with you in this. We're mm -hmm. we're um, uh, and uh, he's just reassuring them that this is this is. Out of his love and and uh, caring and like you said as a as a pastoral uh -huh. um, yeah yeah so yeah I believe he's I believe he means it mm -hmm. okay good <laughs> yeah I do believe myself but when sometimes you uh, uh, you listen to this and then you 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 have reason to ask people have asked uh, reason to ask many times from pastors as well that you do really mean what you said or was it just the preaching or you really mean what people need to know and Paul understand it and understood it that they need to see your heart mm -hmm. hearing words is one thing but seeing heart and I'm sure that here Paul is communicating to words uh, and writing to the church but they have also seen him and they have learned him to know by his heart. This is what, what pastoral ministry is all about, that words is one thing, and I don't want to say that words are different than, than real life, uh, and that's not what I'm saying, but people also need to see into your heart mm -hmm. so that uh, you really mean what you say. Uh, if you are a public speaker, let's just uh, refer to our friends in, in political field. Uh, they can say whatever uh, they believe is pleasing you to get your vote, uh, I guess, to put it plainly. And then the actions may be totally different. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when election comes, they are having a hard time to prove that, okay, by the actions I did, I did it for this and this. And they are talking us over again mm -hmm. with all due respect mm -hmm. but uh, now in the church there's no room for politics if you are trying to be politician in the church wrong field what people are looking to find in the church is authenticity mm -hmm. real something real mm -hmm. and some people many people come to church being tired of fake living and words only or something like they need to see the people who are there whether they are more or fewer whether they are big church or small church but they're they are real they are real people and they believe in what they are talking and hearing so i think yeah paul is very true with his words here so that was good good to see mm -hmm. okay let's keep on reading more hold on uh, I think we take only two verses now uh, from 5 through 7. Let's see what, what okay. is there. 5, 6, and 7. When we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction, with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. But God, who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. His presence was a joy, but so was the news he brought of the encouragement he received from you. 
When he told us how much you long to see me and how sorry you are for what happened and how loyal you are to me, I was filled with joy. Okay. I can see why. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. There was Titus. I think earlier we, we uh, read, I think it was the second chapter when uh, Paul explained that he has to go to Macedonia mm -hmm. to figure out what's going on with Titus. Right, and and then he find he found Titus in and 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 he was very encouraged by by seeing his friend and co fellow co-worker in Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. His presence was a joy, but so was the news he brought us, uh, the encouragement he received from you. So he brought good news. To Apostle Paul from the church at Corinth. So there's a connection right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, where, where did he mention about going to Macedonia to Chapter figure? 2, verse 13. Okay, let's see. I think if we remember, it was earlier here. Yeah, um, I'll start at 12. Chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. When I came to the city of Troas to preach the good news of Christ, the Lord opened a door of opportunity for me. But I had no peace of mind, because my dear brother Titus hadn't yet arrived with a report from you. So I said goodbye and went on to Macedonia to find him. There you go. That's, that's, that's mm -hmm. now a, uh, kind of the answer to that wonder, where is Titus, mm -hmm. what's going on with him? And, and now that gave us an answer that, that uh, everything was okay and seeing him was very encouraging to Paul. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on with this reading here. We don't have too many verses here, but let's see. Let's take again a couple of verses uh, from 8 through 10, please. If you okay. Mind. I am not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you, though I was sorry at first, for I know it was painful to you for a little while. Now I am glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. It was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have, so you were not harmed by us in any way. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in, sal in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. All right, thank that's, you. That's a huge paragraph. Yeah, that's yeah. a big word. Mm -hmm. There's lots of lots of there. Okay. Yeah. So that severe letter that he's referring to is um, one of the four that's been lost. Mm -hmm. So that's not one we have, but mm -hmm. he refers to having written it um, in, uh, I think, the first, first Corinthians, like the beginning, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's, uh, he's saying, well, First of all, to call it a severe letter, he knows it was fairly mm -hmm. firm and fairly strong. Um, so he's saying he was sorry at first that he had sent it, but now he's seen the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. So he realizes it was it was the right thing. It was the right, it's thing, right to thing to do. To do. Mm -hmm. I am not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you, thought I was sorry at first. Have you, friends, done something you feel sorry at first, even you did something after a long time consideration and thinking and prayers, and then you end up doing it, you believe it was the right thing to do, and then all of a sudden you start having, uh, you were not quite sure whether it was right second or wrong. Second thoughts, yeah. You have a second thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. But then when you start seeing fruits, uh, that he, after all, even I wasn't 100% sure after I had mailed it mm -hmm. or whatever, however, what was the means Hit of... send on the email. Their yeah. email is another <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. And they are they don't have much mercy after you push that button, it's gone and there's no way to take it back. Mm -hmm. 
be careful, friends, with the emails, you know. It's hard to get your letters you have sent back, but uh, uh, we have lots of powerful ways nowadays to communicate, which is wonderful blessing, but on the other hand, you need to watch that content, uh, how, you, how you use this means of communication that uh, you don't get yourself in, in trouble or uh, at least in the situation where uh, lots of uh, apologies needs to be uh, sent to many directions. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we can act upon the uh, emotions and feelings and we are different personalities and we get heated very much on something and then we act upon it and there's there's nothing wrong about that old saying that sleep on it mm -hmm. sleep on it think about it i know you are very frustrated about it you may be angry or whatever if the matter can wait sleep on it wait mm -hmm. and sleep on it pray about it and maybe that the next morning uh, your words a little bit different, could be a little bit different. Then you are thankful to God and well, thank God that I have that patience to wait mm -hmm. because I see that there are a little bit more to it than this. I've also found it helpful to <clears throat> to possibly share with a, a, a spouse or a trusted friend and say, so how, do, how does this seem to you? And oftentimes you can be, you can be saying something in a way that you don't feel is being yeah. harsh. Yeah. or critical, but when somebody else reads it, they say, hmm, you might want to think about how you're saying this, and that's true. also very helpful. True, true, very true. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> Paul kind of had been there himself. Yes. At yes. first feeling, okay, wait a minute, uh, uh, that was probably a little bit too two strong caliber words that I sent out, but then after seeing the fruit, he said, wait a minute, uh, I think it was perfectly right. Now I am glad I sent it. He confirms it after seeing what, what, uh, what happened uh, based on the words that he, um, he sent out. Uh, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, I think that needs a little bit explanation, Mary. Mm -hmm. And not underestimating anybody's uh, ability to understand whatsoever, but I think these, these are, for making somebody sorry at first, deeply sorry, or sad, or maybe even mad, but then, after seeing that, well, what is coming out of it is all good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. And again, uh, this is something that can happen in the life of Christian believer. Uh, if, if it comes from somebody who, who loves you and, and who cares for you, mm -hmm. and who really is a trusted person, trusted friend, brother and sister in Christ, and means only good for you. Um, uh, words that we hear from somebody who is close to us or may not be always so pleasant, mm -hmm. but if there's lots of good thinking and care behind these words, uh, even they may make us a little bit mad at first, but when you, when you think about it, it may be. It may have been. It may be good for you, after all. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the case here. Uh, sorrow for our sins. Uh, I guess what he's up to here is uh, is a result of uh, of a uh, in change heart something that in your heart is changing and then you start feeling s sorrow you are not happy mm -hmm. about about your heart you are not happy you are sad there is a sorrow for it and as much as we want to be happy but there is some sort of sorrow mm -hmm. that is good for us 
So, yeah, so um, just reading that phrase, the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have. I thought God wanted us to be mm -hmm. happy and joyful. Mm -hmm. um, but the second part of that um, is the idea, like you're saying, the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. Mm -hmm. or in repentance or change. Um, there's a, a footnote here that I want to just bring up. Um, it says, sorrow God wants us to experience, in quotes, can result in changed behavior, but many people are sorrow sorry only for the effects of their sins or for being caught, caught mm -hmm. which he says is worldly sorrow. Mm -hmm. And then it encourages us to compare Peter's remorse and repentance to with Judas. Judas's bitterness oh, yeah. and act of suicide. Yeah. So Peter, Jesus told Peter he was going to deny him three times before the rooster crows. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, "No way! I'll never deny you. I'll be with you forever. I'll, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I'm by your side." But it, what Jesus said came, came true, came to pass. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, Peter's sorrow that he had denied Jesus. I can't imagine what that, that huge feeling of sorrow and sadness. And then Judas, when he um, basically betrayed Jesus for the 30 pieces of silver, and then I think um, when he realized that the actual result of that was Jesus being crucified, he had a similar kind of sorrow. But the response that the, the two men had was totally different. Was totally different. Uh -huh. Peter's was a response of, of repentance, and, and that sorrow turned out for good. But Judas's, um, he wasn't, he didn't repent, and his sorrow um, caused him to take he his He died own. in bitterness, yeah. you know. So, they're, they're, um, so that is the, the work of sorrow in our lives or the work of um, of uh, there's another word that I'm trying to think of besides sorrow but um, regret I guess maybe mm -hmm. um, can be a life changing for the better um, especially sure. if we if we uh, trust who God is even though we might not understand all of the mm -hmm. all of the uh, uh, circumstances and things mm -hmm. but if we like you said, um, Paul wanted the Corinthians um, to uh, to know his heart, and uh, and and that's the, the the thing that God wants us to know His heart. And so, even at times when we have um, these times in our lives where we realize we have let Him down or we have disobeyed Him, mm -hmm. He, if we trust who God is and how much He loves us we can walk through those things and become changed to be more like him. So true. And again, going back to this uh, key word, should I say, that goes along with this sorrow for your heart is repentance, mm -hmm. which is what needs to be seen as a gift of God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is a good example you brought up between uh, Peter and Judas. Uh, mm -hmm. Judas repented, felt sorry, I'm sure was very sad about what has happened. And through his love and grace, Jesus restored his life but also his ministry. Talking about Peter. Peter. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But then Judas, uh, unfortunately, uh, chose another, another way to handle it kill himself, mm -hmm. uh, which is always the worst choice uh, in any given life circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, that is that is the deep part of it, that sorrow can be also good sorrow. Uh, uh, if, if we are, if we feel sad only that we feel that we got called, <laughs> my goodness sake, I was just having bad luck. With this, yeah, I feel kind of sorry for it. Uh, not probably what I did. Yeah. But well, sorry for the mess I got myself in. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I tried to do better last time. What about trying to come into your senses, mm -hmm. 
spiritually, mm -hmm. asking, going before the Lord mm -hmm. and asking Him to reveal mm -hmm. your heart uh, for you, and then in the life of, in the light of His Holy Spirit, to repent and turning away from wrong, your own wrong ways, uh, sinful ways, and going toward God. Mm -hmm. That's what repentance means. Mm -hmm. I guess this is what Paul is after here, yes. using yeah. this, this uh, describing his own feelings. And sometimes preachers don't know what he's writing or saying. If you commit your heart and minister to, to, to the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, and you, you sometimes your words uh, you don't you, you really don't understand why you have to say that I don't want to say that you just throw words here and there but but if you believe that God can use you as a minister as a witness to him uh, sometimes some words that you believe that they were not they were probably they were not a perfect match but then afterwards you, you, you realize that they were actually words that God and Holy Spirit wanted you to use mm -hmm. for, the, for the good of somebody. Mm -hmm. Now what has happened to me, going back to myself, my experience about it, what I have heard quite, quite often of that say that, well, pastor, you preached to me this morning. Mm -hmm. And then of course, that is to tell you that there's something in that sermon that really went through. Mm -hmm. We were able to cross, uh, uh, make your words across or message across. Or mm -hmm. <clears throat> On the other hand, <clears throat> if 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 somebody believes that the, the the words were so personal, you know, as a pastor, if you you won't say it publicly if you want to say something personal to somebody mm -hmm. you, you don't you don't need pulpit for that right it's a spirit a holy spirit who is who is using mm -hmm. your ministry and your right. preaching your right. sermon for for to make it so personal to somebody mm -hmm. that he, he has reason to say that that was all for me mm -hmm. this morning and that is God thing that is for sure yeah. Yeah. and that is what Paul was doing with Corinthian Christians Mm -hmm. Even he was hesitated, maybe, beforehand and afterwards, even. But then he realized that, no, it was all good. It was God thing. Yeah. It's needed to happen to, mm -hmm. to uh, bring good fruit. Okay, we are, we are moving on. So where are we now, Mary? Did we get lost with our uh, We verses? finished through 10. Okay. So. Let's, uh, let's, so we completed the 10th. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and to, okay, maybe this is good to read uh, from the 11th all the way through the 16th. Okay. So I, I feel that that would give us a better picture of what, what Paul is saying here. Okay. Just see what this godly sorrow produced in you, such earnestness, such concern to clear yourselves, such indignation, such alarm, such longing to see me such zeal, and such a readiness to punish wrong. You showed that you have done everything necessary to make things right. My purpose then was not to write about who did the wrong or who was wronged. I wrote to you so that in the sight of God, you could see for yourselves how loyal you are to us. We have been greatly encouraged by this. In addition to our own encouragement, we were especially delighted to see how happy Titus was about the way all of you welcomed him and set his mind at ease. I had told him how proud I was of you, and you didn't disappoint me. I have always told you the truth, and now my boasting to Titus has also proved true. Now he cares for you more than ever when he remembers the way all of you obeyed him and welcomed him with such fear and deep respect. I am very happy now because I have complete confidence in you. All right. There is a uh, talking about passing lots of affirmation mm -hmm. to Corinthian Christians mm -hmm. from, yes. from Apostle himself. So um, 
uh, that, that's a beautiful thing, Mary, to yes, realize. It is. That mm -hmm. tells us you are a you are a leader from your heart, by your heart. Then also one another thing for us to realize is that uh, how deeply uh, Paul needed coworker and coworkers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you. you just a little bit earlier, he, he he tells about how he felt, how how joyful it was to be reunited with Titus, who uh, about whom he didn't know where where Titus was. So, and so, even being a a man like Paul, needed somebody else to to make his ministry and the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, more powerful. So that is, that is good, good to realize. And how about you and I, my friend, uh, who are far from being Apostle Paul's, uh, need somebody to, uh, to journey with us, to journey alongside and to experience God's presence and to be concerned and worried about to, to care about uh, it, it, it's um, Christianity is not 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 a um, not for hermits mm. uh, it is for common people who needs Jesus and who needs other people uh, mm -hmm. and, and that is, that is what comes so clear in the life of the church mm -hmm. uh, if you believe that you don't have to go to church uh, other than once or twice a year because you good you don't need church maybe you are I put question mark that you are but maybe you are stronger than anybody else in this world even stronger than Apostle Paul but be sure to know this that there is somebody who wants to see you and that somebody may critically need you and your encouragement your blessing and prayers right. so Right. We, it's not just about what we need, but it's about where where God wants to use us in the church, right. in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And and when you listen to Paul, that is, that comes very clear to you. Even being a apostle, he was so dependable on others, mm -hmm. needed others. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's that's one thing here. At, we had a, a handbell rehearsal last night. Mm -hmm. And um, we had we have ten ringers, and two weren't able to be there last night. And um, I took that opportunity to say, well, this to me uh, playing in a handbell choir is one of the most um, uh, descriptive ways of thinking about the body of Christ, because mm -hmm. we sure miss those two people who weren't yes. there, because mm -hmm. they are the only ones that were ringing those notes um, mm -hmm. in the melody or in the harmony, um, and it's very obvious when some of the ringers aren't there. Yeah. But we think, I don't think we realize how important it is for each of us to be planted in the local church that God wants us to be in yeah. for our service to others as well as how people can minister to us. Yes. And it's really obvious in a handbell point <laughs> when people are missing. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. I had a presentation to our ad council, and I think I share it also in my pastoral letters, especially during times like this. Uh, there are three things that we need to recognize and and fight against, and this has part. This is part of what uh, what we see Paul doing mm -hmm. and fighting against. Uh, one thing is against negativity and negativity was going on in the in the life of the Corinthian church yes. even going against Paul who was the founder of the church mm -hmm. so that was one reason for his firm uh, words uh, that he had used to write a letter to them and then the second thing is isolation mm -hmm. and especially during this COVID pandemic time how easily that can happen, even to strong Christians, that they become isolated. Isolated, excuse me. And that is not social distancing, because social distancing, we are still, we are, we are a little bit distant from from one another, but we are not isolated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a 
way, way different thing. So fighting and realizing that we are to go against isolation. Isolation is never a good thing. It's always a bad thing. And the third thing is uh, trauma, trauma. When we start making big deal of, of something that is not really that big thing at all. Uh, trauma is, uh, trauma is most of the time it's a bad thing. So, um, we're so not talking in, about acting. You're talking we are not about talking about acting. acting. We are talking about something that out of n almost nothing, uh, we create something so big mm -hmm. and negative mm -hmm. and hurting and, and not dealing with the right motives. Right. So, um, so the uh, negativity and isolation and trauma, I'm sure that all these three were going on in the mm -hmm. church in Corinth. Mm -hmm. Negativity is one thing and then... Right. Paul even says in verse 12, as far mm -hmm. as the drama that you're talking mm -hmm. about, my purpose then was not to write about who did the wrong uh -huh. or who was wrong. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I'm not writing to talk about the drama. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote to you so that in, sight, in the sight of God, you could see for yourselves how loyal you are to us. So that wasn't the point as to like, like, like in a, a, a legal court to say, well, you were wrong, you were right. That wasn't, that wasn't Paul's point or reason for writing. And that, that is um, most of the time also true in situations in, in, in churches mm -hmm. where it's not, we don't really gain anything from deciding who was right or wrong, um, but we gain something from being reconciled to each other. That's true. There's no winners in trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no winners. Everybody is losing something. People get more hurt. Uh, there's just more mess. Uh, but then when restoration comes place and reconciliation and uh, repentance and coming to a senses, well, it was not said one person who was wrong. We all were wrong, one way or another. And sometimes if you have feeling, well, I didn't have nothing to do with it, how can I be wrong? But saying that, okay, uh, wrong was that I probably didn't pray enough, uh, whatever. But you're coming to senses right way and, and repenting and feeling, having sorrow or something. Mm -hmm that is deep sorrow, that my heart wasn't right. So that always brings good results and bring unity and power and strength and blessings. Uh, so um, I'm sure that this is what Paul was uh, uh, reminding uh, Corinthian church about and reminding, guess what, reminding us as well. Uh, we are coming to the end of time, end of times here with this <laughs> chapter. <laughs> so what else we need to, pick up here. Um, I, I just here. wanted to uh, say one more thing about these these uh, right responses. He really does affirm them and, and, and encourage them and their, their uh, how they responded rightly. And um, again, in one of the footnotes, it, it speaks of um, how uh, a mature Christian should graciously accept constructive criticism, sincerely evaluate it, and grow from it. Mm -hmm. Now that that is a true statement, but that is that is a hard statement. That is hard yes. to do that. Yes. And um, in in my own life, um, that's that's an area that I've really desired to grow more in, and not let myself let not let my feelings get hurt, or not let. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that is has really helped me is, and I'll, I'll try to make this brief, but it's it's this uh, book that Henry Nouwen wrote called Life of the Beloved, mm -hmm. and. Um, the main, his main point is that we are each, you and I are each the son or the beloved son or daughter of God. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can absorb that and, and, and live in that knowledge of being the beloved daughter of God, the, the more we can let go of those um, maybe small uh, insults or, or whatever they are and um, and uh, respond rightly mm -hmm. because it's not 
um, it's a if you if you have that if you the more solidly you have that as your identity the easier it is to not let those smaller things um, kind of hit you <laughs> I yeah. don't know if I'm saying that very clearly but um Paul is talking about in here how they responded rightly and they grew from it and that that's what um, what God wants us to be able to do yeah, by that's... his spirit his his Holy Spirit will help us do that. And that's, it's not in our own strength. Um, mm -hmm. And that's another thing that is good to learn. Good, good, good words to close this uh, study today. So, um, fighting, realizing that negativity is not good, uh, isolation is not good, creating trauma is not good because it prevents us seeing that we are. Uh, we are living the life of beloved son mm -hmm. and daughter of God. Yeah. And there's something valuable, way more valuable in every one of us that we can imagine. Mm -hmm. Because we are, we are reason for God, for God. We are reason for God's love. We are the, the I don't know, not target for God's love, but we are. Recipients, we are the. Recipients, um, we are, we are the right right in the in the center of God's love mm -hmm. uh, this is why you were the reason why Jesus came yes. yes and guess what I was the reason why Jesus came and Mary was the reason why Jesus came mm -hmm. and if this is what we believe oh my goodness it opens up yes. a way yes. different uh, uh, a view to review to review each other and to yeah. see us yeah. from different perspective and life. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, this was the seventh chapter of Apostle Paul's second letter to Corinthians. Okay, next time it is eighth chapter. Keep on reading, and then we come back and we go from there. I'm going to ask Mary to please to uh, close in prayer. Right. Right. And then we go from there. And just, I'll say this one more time. The book, it's really, really good. It's called The Life of the Beloved, and it's by Henry Nowen, N-O-U-W-E-N. -E he has lots of really lots good Lots of good books. Oh. Lots, anything you find from him, they're good. Very, very deep. All right, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Just pause for a moment and thank you for loving us so much that we are the recipients of your love. Help us to remember that about each other. Help us that to remember that about ourselves. And Father, help us to, to walk in a way that, um, that reflects your love for others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, friends. See you next time. Keep on reading. <laughs>